Hello, welcome to 365 SBS episode 38, Don't Have Much to Say, which is really funny because it's not true. I have a whole lot to say and the songs are going to be at a minimum musically, but to me, just as a note of explanation, as soon as I write, I generally write my lyrics first. And once I've written the lyrics to me, I have the song. It's just I got to dress it up with some nice music. But I, I actually, to be more accurate, should call my, and that's what today's show is all about, is accuracy with the language. But as soon as I write some lyrics, they're not, it's not a song. But to me, it's a song. So a little explanation. So I don't have much to say is the name of the show. And I'm going to tell you how I, in fact, I'm going to sing a little bit of that song right now. Well, like I say, it's lyric sheet. I got an old lyric sheet right here. Check it out. I found it. I was looking around and uh, I was actually looking for another song called Computer Blues, which I couldn't find the lyrics for, but I found a tape of. I was looking for a tape of this. I couldn't find it, but I found the sheet, which was going to lead to my next song called Amanuensis. Which is, what does that mean? Well, a lot of people know what it means, a lot of people don't. That's why I'm clearing up all this language confusion today. That's my whole theme. But I'm going to do a little bit of, don't have much to say, which like I say, I don't really have a tune for it. But it'll be, I'm going to throw a little something just to give you an idea of the lyrics. to say I don't have much to say I just want to take a ride and get away so there you go yeah this is it's a song to me you know I'll work on I'll get I might change it up but I'll read you the lyrics because this is a song to me yeah, and it's a lot of times I don't feel like talking too much but today is not that day I don't have much to say, just want to take a ride, get away. I want to feel the sun, just want to see your face and smell the ocean spray. I don't have much to say. That breeze feels so nice, this must be what it's like in paradise. Feel like I'm winning every time I throw the dice. That breeze whoosh, whoosh, feels so nice, feel that breeze. Woo! Okay, and then it goes on. It's got some nice words. It's a song. To me, that's song number one. Hello! Number two, I don't know if I should do computer blues. Yeah, I'm going to do computer blues next. Now, I do have, I couldn't find the lyrics for this, but I got a little bit of the tune, and I know the general contribution I want this song to make to today's show because I, there's a phrase in there I don't want to hear no telex news I can I'm relating that to computers but probably most people in the computer age don't even know what a telex is I'm just gonna play a touch of this so you get the flavor and I want to show a little musical uh, technique that you might be interested in here it goes oh it might be too loud Let's put it. gotta have my finger on the dial I've got 
future blue I don't want to hear Let me pause right there. I don't want to hear no telex news. I'm going to get to telex in just a minute. What is a telex? I'm going to just run this to the chorus. Talk to me, baby, not electronically. Now, how I can compute, speaking of computing, a, a phony English accent with computers, God only knows. But anyway, that's a little taste of computer blues. Telex. Let's get to telex real quick. Because this kind of is the whole point of my show right here. Telex. What is a telex? To you... To you who are not in the know about telexes. I marked it in here because I wasn't even sure myself. I looked it up, telex, which is interesting because it, it was a, a word, I think, that came into being in 1943, so I'm really up to speed here. A communication service involving te uh, teletypewriters connected by wire through automatic exchanges, a telex. So that's kind of a precursor to the computer age. <laughs> Tell, computer blues, telex, you know, whatever. But I'm not a real computer guy. That's which it leads me to my next part of the show. Is I like old books. I like going to the booksellers, an old bookstore in the part of Akron where my son just moved to. I went there this Saturday. I got a few books. I Now here's what... Like, you know, computers, you can find stuff, information. Boom, 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 boom. Click, 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 click. There you go. I like to go there, take a couple hours, get some coffee, sit in a chair, wander around, dusty smell, dusky rather, and just look and wander and just relax and enjoy. You know, what's, what's the rush? Where are you going? This ain't a race. I mean, come on. So I go there and I got a few books. This part of it was a, I got a whole set of books by this guy. Can you see that? Yes, you can. It's Riley, uh, James Whitcomb Riley, an old poet, dialectic poet, which leads to the last part of my show, which I'll get right to. And a few other books. Oh, and I got this classic. I've been looking for this. Any of you writers out there, this book is called Strunk and White. you probably heard it. If you're a legitimate writer, if you haven't, you better get it. The Elements of Style. I got this right next to my Bible, my Matthew Henry commentary, my dictionary, my basics, you know, the essentials, so to speak, kind of like Turner Classic Movies, the essentials. But what it is, this book just he spells it all out, and the dialect. What, What's a dialect? Like I say, I'm, I'm setting you up. Just hang with me for a little while. We're gonna, it's gonna wrap up in a, just a 
perfectly beautiful little bow of explanation. Get this book, James Wickham Riley looked interesting, poet. It wasn't expensive, look at this. Got 150, can you see that? 150, look at that. 150 for this nice book, unbelievable. What a deal, what a steal. Anyway, I got it, got nice pictures in it, got everything. I'm reading the first song in this. And I didn't realize that he writes in a dialect. My grandpa, he's always saying, sing a song of cheer. And once I says, what? Once, spelled W-U-N-S-T. Once. But that's how, he's just spelling how it was pronounced in the dialect of the time. This is the late 1800s. So I'm thinking, thinking back to it, I had a show a while ago, there's one show and I said, ax. Now let me ask you a question, ax. I say that all the time. I like the way it sounds. It works for me. I know it's just a dialectic phrase, but I have to explain it to my peeps out there, the spizzites. They wonder, well, what's this guy with, with the ax? It's A-S-K, it's ask. It's not ax. It's dialect. It's, it's, it's the way you say it. Like I say, I got to get to the store. It's not get, it's get. But, you know, come on, cut, cut me some slack. I like my axe. I like my other axe, too, even though uh, sometimes you got a sharp blade on that puppy, but we'll, we'll get to that. Okay, I'm checking my notes here. Well, we got the axe thing, we got the dialect, the book, and then I was... Re Here's why I came to this type of show today. One more thing came into the line here. I was reading another book I got there, Previously, it was just a humorous book. Last night, this was killing me. I was laughing so hard. I thought if I'd share today, I wouldn't even be able to read it. I was falling out the bed, laughing so hard. And I was kind of glad my wife wasn't up there that night because I knew I'd be distracting her. What? So funny. And that, I couldn't explain it. And I, it, it won't even, probably won't even seem that funny right now because I read it again. Uh, it was still pretty funny. It's a book about, a, this is just a humorous book, and this man is telling a tale of he saw this Chinese guy at the railroad station who lost his bags, and he got upset, and he was worried, and in a hurry, he went up to the, the counter and was pounded on it and demanded what happened. Here's, here's the way he said it. His train was going, his bag was nowhere to be found, and he pounded the counter with his fist and yelled, uh, I'm going to try a Chinese dialect, but I'm not that great at this. Put the damn seldom where my bag go. Pretty damn seldom where my bag go. I don't know. That was killing me last night. Pretty damn seldom where my bag go. She no fly. You no more fit run station than God's sake. That all I hope. You pretty, <laughs> pretty damn seldom <laughs> where my bag go. I, I do like that for I'm going to Hey, where are my keys? Pretty damn sell them where my keys go. Pretty damn sell them where my phone go. You no more fit run the house than God's sake. That's all I hope. Okay, so anyway, that's some, not dialect, but the language. It just kill me how, to me, funny, amusing, exciting, ex explanatory, beautiful, wonderful language. I'm a big language guy. That's what I'm saying. All my songs to me are just the lyrics. Okay, you see, did I do Don't Have Much to Say? Yes, I did. Did that. Oh, and this is one more last song, and then I'm going to give you my closing moments here. But I have a song called Amanuensis. And I wrote this song because Amanuensis. Well, i got to get my dictionary out for that. What is an Amanuensis precisely? I wrote a whole song. There it is. Look, there's another one. I like to rattle. Let's go back to my my infantile wound stage. Hearing those no and have when I was a baby with my rattle. Woo! There it is. It's called Amanuensis. Okay, let's look up Amanuensis. I got it marked here so I can find it nice and easy. Look at this. Right there. Bingo, bango, bongity boom. Amanuensis. 
It's one employed to write from dictation or to copy manuscript. I think it's even more than that. It's to edit, make sure, check, do things. And I kind of expanded the meaning in my own mind, which like uh, Dr. Johnson had Boswell as his, his man Friday, so to speak. Speaking of books and reading and all that, Boswell's Life of Johnson, can't beat it. As I said, maybe you could, but why would you even want to? A little side note, I threw that in for free, no extra charge. Amanuensis, and I'm not going to go through the whole song. In fact, I wish I could find it on an old tape. I can't. I'm going to have to try to remember. Fortunately, I wrote the chords down on the lyrics, and I found it. I need an amanuensis in my circumstances without delay. I need, yeah, I do, and a man who winces to double check my tenses in the draft of my play. And it goes on and on, and it's awesome. It's fabulous, it's glorious, it's wonderful, and probably about four people in the world even know what I was talking about. Yeah, that's major exaggeration. There's a lot of people who know what a manuensis is, but that's an old term. It's not used very often. I'll just read the lyrics and uh, we're done. And I'm going to go to the one thing I really love, which is to play with words, as you can see. I need an amanuensis in my circumstances without delay to double check the tenses that I drive my play for practical reasons, not pretenses, as I always say. I need an amanuensis. That's the consensus of my friends today to oversee my expenses they're in such disarray and I need a manuance to prepare my defenses for what the critics say and I'm going to find where the best is I'm willing to pay and my last line I need an amanuensis before the end commences and my eyesight fades because I got a lot of papers, I got a lot of tapes, I got a lot of... I need an amanuensis. I need one. This is no joke. I'm not joking. I'm serious. I need an amanuensis. Okay, now I'm going to just go to my last part. Because I was thinking about this. This axe deal. And I actually like here. So I'm going to refer to this one more time before I get to the axe. Because it's a good word. Axe. Let's, let's all try that once. Okay, everybody. One, two, three. Axe. Don't say ask... It, it doesn't have the, mm. I mean, to cut in, you want to find out what something is. You need to know. The mind hungers after knowledge and wisdom. I got to get to that. Oh, I need my, I got to ask you a question. I got to ask that. There it is. That's what I'm talking about. Now, here, now here's what uh, old Strunk or White, one of them says. Do not attempt to use dialect unless you are a devoted student of the tongue you hope to reproduce. And I hope to reproduce the verbiage of the community I'm part of. If you use dialect, be consistent. So I should always say ax. I like to say ax. Take, for example, the word once. It often appears in dialect writing as O-N-C-E-T. But O-N-C-E-T looks as though it should be pronounced Onset. A better spelling would be W U N S T. Once. Now, once I was down to Creek washing my britches, I spilled some vittles on. I had to clean them up. Dang, man. There's some dialect. That's what you need. So he says it's okay to. Strunk says, yeah, dialect's fine. You know, it's incorporated into the language. The best dialectic writers, by and large, are economical of their talents. They use the minimum, not the maximum, of deviation from the norm. So I'm going to, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to use the concept of dialect and how acts takes. Well, here's where we're going to go over here now. I'm going to use this. Take this. Flip this around. Show you for number one. Here's today's picture I had in the background. And I, I chose this because it kind of looked, to me, i just starting a picture, and I make it what I want. Just like language, you, you, it's malleable. And you take this 
form I just started slapping some paint on the canvas I'm gonna make it into something and it kind of like I say it looked a little to me like the Tower of Babel that's why I chose this picture but here's what I want to get to I was thinking about this whole concept of axed so you see and I, I'm proposing a new a new delineation of the, of the word English. I think we should change it as we did in ask. You switch the last two letters. So ask becomes ax, which equals ax is how it's pronounced. Ask. There's a little class in the new English. Anglais. And much, much more beautiful. Ask. Ax. Ax. Now, does this apply? It doesn't apply everywhere. Like, like Strunk or White said, you have to be economical. You can't use it everywhere. Even though I do like, say, a phrase like, I've got a dog instead of a cow. Now, if you, if you apply the rules of English, you get, I've got a gado instead of a quo. I've got to a quo. No, I've got, <laughs> let me try it again. I've got to a to go instead of a quo. Now, I like quo. Get to and get to. Eh, that's not working, but quo. It's kind of like yeah, you can have a little fun, like you're a kid again. Oh, look at the quo. And it kind of sounds like quo, quo. So I think we can keep quo. From now on, everyone, do not say cow. Oh, but see, oh, there's a, there's a glitch. Because cow becomes quo, it doesn't really, re so scratch that, forget that. But there, I do have, I think, one word that might be really accepted in English. H has anyone ever heard this phrase? Do I look fat in this dress? It could be a dreaded phrase. In fact, my brother, if, I hope he doesn't mind me mentioning this, one time his, his uh, past wife, and therein lies rub, asked him this very, do I look fat in this dress? It was a, a black dress they were getting ready for a party. Uh, Kirk, I hope you really don't mind if I share this, because you shared it. I think it's way a long time ago. It's just, and you're a good jokester, so you'll, you'll enjoy the humor. Do I look fat in this dress, this pure black dress? Kirk's response, he didn't think. You should think before you leap. Do I look fat in this dress? Nah, that's just your basic Orson Welles look. Well, yeah, like I say, that didn't go over too good. But now, if, now, perhaps, if his wife would have said, speaking again in English, do I look fat in this dress? Or... Even more. Do I look fatal? Do I look fatal on this dress? Well, yes, you do, and keep it up, babe. It would be it would be the proper response. It would be the naturally elicited response. Do I look fatal in this dress? Oh yes. So you see, there is excellence to be found if we just explore the language. And that is going to have to wrap up today's show. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say as we're studying our Anglais, let's say, uh, what can we say while I'm spinning around? Ciao for now. Hashtag GBE. Classic pose. I'm running out of classic poses. I'm going to have to do there it is. Okay, there's a classic pose. Classic pose, I suppose. Hashtag GB uh, uh, Dunsville. Clickety, 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 click, click, click. Bingo.